the beginning of chapter 21, Victor's in court hearing the evidence from an eyewitness of what had happened the night before. As we hear the account of the fisherman having discovered the body of a man who was to all appearance dead on the beach, it kind of depends how good we are at solving mysteries, whether we realise whose body it is. Maybe we have no idea and we're very much in the position that Victor finds himself, oblivious to how any of this could have anything to do with him. This section, though, is very much like a crime novel in terms of its style, and if you're good at reading between the lines and working things out when you're reading that kind of text, then you might realise a long time before Victor does that the body is that of his close friend, Henry Clavel. When Victor is told of the mark of the fingers around the man's throat, he looks up and starts to sweat. He says, I remember the murder of my brother, and I felt myself extremely agitated. My limbs trembled and a mist came over my eyes. The magistrate looks at Victor's response and begins to assume it's a sign of his guilt. When Victor is then taken in to see the body, he appears to be confessing his guilt when he says, have my murderous machinations deprived you also, my dearest Henry, of life? Two, I have already destroyed. Other victims await their destiny. Not really the kind of thing you want to say, when anything you do say could be written down and used in evidence against you. There's irony and abundance here, of course. Victor is innocent in the sense that he didn't actually kill Henry. He knows who did, but can't tell anyone. But he is guilty in the sense that he's the one who created Henry's murderer and set off this whole chain of disasters. Victor is getting what he deserves, of course. Think back to the beginning of the novel and the plight of Justine, the innocent victim of a mockery of justice. Thirteen chapters later and Victor's standing in the dock like she was, accused of a crime he didn't commit, but obviously not as worthy of our sympathy as Justine was. Victor's response to seeing Henry's body, realising that the monster has struck again and that he is ultimately responsible again for the, a loved one's death, is interesting. Victor says, the human frame could no longer support the agonising suffering that I endured, and I was carried out of the room in strong convulsions. He's then ill for a couple of months. Does that sound familiar? Think back to how he responded to the creation of the monster back in chapter five, bedbound and semi-conscious for months as his friend Henry nursed him back to health. We're seeing a pattern here, aren't we? When Victor is confront confronted with the reality of his guilt and the consequences of his actions, he shuts down. It's a kind of physical response to psychological trauma, if you like. When the guilt is too much, the subconscious defence mechanism of a physical illness kicks in. Just as Henry was there in Chapter 5 to ease Victor back to some sort of functioning role in society, the importance of Friendship and emotional support is shown here again, as Kerwin and Alphonse Frankenstein, his father, become the latest benefactors and encouragers of Victor. Kerwin is interesting though, isn't he? Look at how he first responds to the evidence. He listens to the account of the fisherman, which provides enough circumstantial evidence to suggest that Victor should indeed be suspected of murder. So he asks for him to be shown the body. Victor then appears to admit his guilt and is thrown into prison where he remains in some kind of semi-conscious state for two months. In the meantime, Cohen has tracked down Victor's father and brought him to Ireland to visit his son. Victor is, of course, eventually released. Although we could agree that he is guilty on some deeper level, justice, in effect, has been done, hasn't it? Well, maybe. Or maybe we could look at this example of the justice system as just as much of an indictment as the last one. So if Justine's trial is a mockery of justice, is the Irish judicial system any better? What seems to shift the magistrate's opinion? Is it the meticulous scrutiny of evidence? Perhaps a new eyewitness or alibi? Or maybe it's just the fact that Victor seems like a jolly decent upper-class fellow who shouldn't be languishing in a dungeon. Ultimately, it seems to be class 
and privilege which are the deciding factors, I think. Kerwin seems to align himself on some kind of social level with Victor. Notice that he's the only one there who can speak French to him, and this seems to create some kind of bond between them. Look at how their conversation is described when we're told he drew a chair close to mine and addressed me in French. Something seems to persuade Kerwin to charge himself with every care of collecting witnesses and arranging my defence. From the outset, he seems to treat Victor differently from the other prisoners, providing him with a better cell, sparing him the disgrace of appearing publicly as a criminal, etc. The subtext here, I think, seems to me to suggest that Victor speaks French and has a respectable family in Geneva, so when the impressive figure of Alphonse Frankenstein turns up, is this what turns things ultimately in Victor's favour? Whether you think justice hasn't been done because Victor deserves to be convicted, even if he's superficially innocent, or whether you think justice is only done by chance as a byproduct of a preferential class-based prejudice, the justice system doesn't come out of this well, does it? Corrupt, prejudiced, and unfit for purpose.